下一位讲者刚从那边走出来，所以要给他一点时间。是我们非常优秀的台大的学生。好，我们刚刚都看到巴西跟韩国的案例了，创造一些新的工具，跟降低很多门槛，然后让民主这件事情变得更有趣、更好玩，但是也产生了一些新的问题。那在台湾，如果要让民主的过程变得更有趣，然后用一些新的工具，会付出什么样子的代价呢？<笑>这位讲者就可以告诉大家，到底在这边在台湾做这件事会有什么样的代价。刚刚稍微问了他一下，也就是他们在学校里面办了选举之后，他们就被告了。细<笑>节的部分，你还来听他说。那我们掌声欢迎我们的博任。Oh. Hey everyone, and I'm Horan. Uh, 大家好，我是江博仁。那呃，这个 talk 我将待会会用英文讲，但是就是这个东西到时候在 speaker day 会有就是中文的，就是类似的简报翻译，所以到时候就是结束大家可以参考。Okay, so I'm going to perform my talk today in English, and today I'm going to talk about the um electoral process in NTU. Um, basically, so I'm um so I'm Horan, or you can call me RS. I'm currently a, a senior law undergrad at NTU, and I also do like elect, uh, election and recall executive committee, and I founded the open source community in NTU. So if you do have like interest in open source, then please feel free to like just um, talk, come and talk to me. Yeah. So we're talking about election. Um, this photo is actually taken in my like first uh, in my freshman year when I first came into NTU. This is uh, the a, a bookmark I received for like casting a vote. Like the electoral process is really like popular or flourishing in NTU, and basically that's because like um, there are like um, a thirty thousand elector in NTU, and we have like direct presidential election just. Far before we have direct presidential election in Taiwan, so actually, like the students in the like early years, in thirty or forty years earlier, they do like start changing the uh, student associations uh, structure and its organization to persuade to like encourage the whole Taiwan society to change into a democratic democratic um, architecture. So it, it's even established before martial law like uh, ruling was lifted. So like in NTU, the election is really important, and in its early years, like in 1980s, there are like rivalries, there are like uh, fighting with each other, there are parties, there are different kind of things you would expect in a like a nowadays democracy um, country. Um, this kind of um, problem become uh, less. Um, Significant in recent day, days, as like uh, as we do have like a current, current like a formal democracy, it became uh, less or less like uh, people are less and less like involved in this kind of procedure, and we have like a voting rate from like fifty percent and it dwindled to like ten percent, but it's still like a thousands of people are in, are involved in the process and. We have a rich history of electoral suit, which means that basically, like everyone who like lose the election went to the student court and to like sue the electoral board for like electoral fraud. So we do have a constant like uh, constant history of this kind of rulings. And since our um, judges in student court is formed by those who have like lawyers degree from College of Law, so this become like a outpost for our own democracy. And that's what makes things interesting. So um, this is uh, one of the flame graphs we drawn from from our like voting process. Um, this is the um, you could see the election process formed from the opening of the election, and there's a significant pause in the middle since we have a uh, we have a tornado drill right um, between our election <laughs> done by the school. And yeah, but you can see that still, like people are really in, encouraged to like participate in the election. It is colored by different voting stations, and this is colored by college. You could see from the um col the color the color that differentiates from the college. Like the purple ones are the College of Law, the College of Science. The yellow ones are like um the College of Agriculture, and like the least significant ones are like Biology and uh. Elect, uh, computer science and electrical engineering, they are like the minors. But still, uh, this is 
the like overall voting statistics for our electoral vote. This is one of the cool things you could have done with um, e-voting e e that you could like visualize when and how people are going to vote and which voting station they are going to cast their vote and when it will be the rush hours and how we're gonna deal with that. So it all seems really like interesting. Like in traditional vote, we have like uh, we examining your like own IDs and you'll need to will need to check your student ID if you are registered in that a semester and once we've verified your identity we'll just let you like mark the ballot and you just cast a vote into the voting box. But to do this in NTU become like more and more intensive since we usually need to like count votes um, far into the midnight until like 2 or 3 a.m. since we have like thousands of votes and since voting boxes are really huge and we have like tens and twenties of uh, voting stations we'll need to ship them from different um, different campuses back to our central um, central election center and to count them and that makes the labor cost unbearable and basically you are basically spending like a quarter of our student association's budget just to do the election so this become an issue and so before my freshman year um, the um, chairman of electoral board actually tries to push for e-vote and it acts like just like the book my RBC do you verify your identity and you've gotten a passcode or authorization code and you just vote through the tablet. And it was quite, quite um, easy and approachable. So, and usually when we're in the first, like fall semester, it, it is not as important since it just elects like student rep representative from different college. But on the spring semester, um, the problem arises since we are electing the president. And usually, when like harsh um, political events involve, they'll become like a uh, ten or fifteen percent um, voting percentage, and things will become like really nasty. So, I uh, in my freshman year in the uh, spring semester, I was traveling with friends in Hualien, where I just like um, wandering around and. But at that night, when we were staying in the hotel, like, I was asking, why are you writing some code? And, and uh, one of my friends in NTUST just mentioned that I was asked to save your electoral system since, your, um, since the classmate um, who was in charge of that e-system realized that um, it will become rushed by thousands of electors, and he just quit. <laughs> so like, a, a week before election, one of my friends just like, asked to do an uh, like e-vote system like from scratch and like it, it eventually it exploded and things got really dirty so as as a one of the like technology um, advocates in our school we start to um, consider what is a well-designed election um, strategy or well what is a well-designed e-vote in contrast to like this kind of rushed um, temporary system build up each semester. So this was the um, old system that my friend like um, taped up in a week. It just looked like the previous system. It was run, running on Amazon's web cloud and it works great um, until that we are using tablets and since um, 4, 4G uh, connections aren't that popular in those days, um, the network went dead and the battery went dead and everything just like uh, like a death spiral going down. So we are rethinking the ar architecture. How could we like run an ordinary voting station? It's like in NTU, like most of the people aren't really encouraged or aren't really into vote in your own dormitory or vote in your own house. It's because like in the past history, there's like candidates who will just knock every dorm door and like watch them to vote for them. So in in like. Um, it, there, there's some history on that, so we are not going to do that approach. We're still using a physical voting station, but we'll try to like use a tablet to like scan the student ID and to read your student ID um, card since they are basically um, magnetic uh, NFC tags, and we'll try to like um, automatically do the whole previous process and to make it less error prone. And for, and since we are also like, uh, and since we are also like verifying your um, C 
student status, whether you are registered or not, will just like connect, uh, will just like uh, integrate with our academic office to make sure that you're a, you're a valid elector. And this is what the system looked like in like 20, 20, uh, 20 like 20, 14 or 13, yeah. That, that's probably the system that at the moment. So like student IDs are basically my fair base easy cards so we could easily read them and re read the sectors just like our like national IDs in the like in 2020s who are going to do a similar thing in Taiwan. But since student IDs already have your um, identification numbers written into the sector, we could just read them out if we do have the school's keys. And we're incorporating with academic office to make sure that you are an eligible elector. And we're programmatically uh, like dispatching all the authorization codes to like make the process automated. So basically, you just go to the voting station, swipe your ID card, um, and tap it uh, against the tablet. And the and it, the electoral step will told you to just go and vote in one of the booths. And you just like it'll automatically like send your authorization code, which is the e-representation of your ballot, and you just like vote it on the tablet and it's done. And where, since we do have the um, previous like incidents on network, we'll try to like establish all the network equipments and we have to establish a um, standard procedure on establishing such vote stations. And that gives, gives us an advantage on like scaling. We, as long as we do have the equipment, we could easily scale on like everywhere where network is available. As long as we do have iPads and laptops like this. So, and for the auditing process, since um, most of our classmates are um, doubtful to e-voting afterwards, so we try to make it like um, real clear. Is that where we separated the two system apart? Like in most e-vote systems, you'll just have a single server that pro that just like count incrementing the vote counts. But we try to do a separation between uh, authentication and the actual voting. So basically, when you are verified against our own servers, when we're asking the academic office to uh, for your identity will record you as an elector, just like old days. And after that, we'll issue you an authorization code, which is then transported to the tablet and then go through the vote server. So we don't have like direct intervention between two servers. And it's just like a invisible transport for the ballot from, uh, from our hands to yours and into the um, virtual voting box. That's probably our intention. And we'll count every other agent code, and if there's like everyone's just leave between votes or there are like excessive authorization codes, um, we'll record those incidents um, in in each voting station, and we'll do a calibration for the counts, and we'll make sure that every ballot, every authorization code we issued are matches the final like used authorization code. So that makes the election like um, more trusted. And that's our like standard procedure to like reduce our risk and to be sued. <laughs> yeah, but si still like since still like go on and we after we push up our own system and there's like plenty of challenges. We first try our own uh, this kind of election system in an emulated um, um, 2014 Taipei um, mayoral election and you can vote for your own own mayor candidate. And it's apparently fake, but to encourage people to like participate and test our own system, we just like do th these kind of things to test and make sure the system works. And this is the actual voting process. You can see it primarily resembles the traditional voting experience, except the equipments are replaced with uh, digital ones. And we have like propaganda to tell you like how to do this kind of voting and how it could be trusted and how could you like verify it against and what how are we going to like um, understand its technical aspects to understand this kind of distinction to make it more safe. 
Yeah, and if uh, eventually the tablet we're using is Google's Nexus 7, which could read micro text, but since um, there's like some patent issues on and on its like technology, like less and less manufacturers are put, putting my fair um, readable chips in the cell phone and in the mobile phone. So we are encouraged, uh, we are encountering a hardware like um, digression that we can, could not read our cards since like newer devices can read from my fair cards. So we try to like do our own um, equipment from Raspberry Pi, from Orange Pi, from like cheap uh, cheap boards, and we are trying to like uh, we are trying to make the hardware home built and owned to make it more stable. Yeah, and so you can see from the right hand side is our like own <laughs> MC tag, and we do have a like uh, and we do have a, like a devotion to the um, e-vote gods for <laughs> <laughs> to make sure the intellectual process went smoothly. And and eventually we discover that e-vote actually like are a prone to are prone to problems. It's like we we do allow electoral staff to like cancel out your authorization codes and to cancel out your vote if you just leave between voting. If you didn't complete all all of your ballots and we could like just cancel out the all authorization code and mark it invalid. But like since it's a big red button and the steps are just um, really boring when staying at a voting station, they'll just constantly try to click on that the, those buttons and mark people's vote as invalidated and we'll get sued. So eventually we'll try to like lower and to um, eliminate all like hum human or manual contact and to try to move all the um, features to the server side, but then it will make a problem, is that the server side architecture become more and more complex, we'll need to log more and more like um, audit process through our uh, auditing, and like there are people who apply for um, voting at another station or voting remotely, but then they come to the physical voting location and rent for like an actual vote. So we'll need to deal with different kind of situations, and where if we're all doing this in our own system, we're all transferring all the risk onto the DevOps team, and that becomes a problem. It's like that, it's like that since after all, we just like abolish our hardware since like deploying um, in a large scale to Raspberry Pi has become a problem. So we are constantly like shifting with different hardware, and eventually went back to like Windows with. Uh, with a previous hardware used by school officials, but even though we are like following our uh, previous aspects, we're still like faced increasingly like difficult uh, situation. It's that after after like four or five years of e-vote, we discovered that uh, e-voting like greatly reduced the burden of like uh, counting votes and establishing voting stations since we just like need to borrow all the like equipments. And we could just easily set them up since we require like really, uh, really little like manual in intervention, and we usually don't want electro staff to mess with our equipment. But it becomes a problem since we are like shifting all those risks toward us, and like there are plenty of factors that involve in this kind of process. You'll need to have a dedicated team in hardware, in DevOps, in all kind of like training to make sure that the. Uh, the personal problem is solved, the hardware is stable, and the server is verifiable. And even, th even though you have this kind of situation, it still needs to be like, able to be traced in some aspect to like, um, fulfill the requirement of legislators or to, to allow supervising. And now, and now things get nasty because like, in NTU, we do have like, some uh, advanced uh, legislation, which allows you to do remote voting. And usually this is done by like, we issue an authorization code on the voting day to, through you through email, and you could like vote remotely and the uh, ballot just like count directly toward the um, voting server, just like the others. But that makes a problem because like, this is like out of our own system, and since there are like manual verification process, and so, all of this is done manually by the electoral board. And we do have previous problems, is that 
they misconfigure the identity of different electors and like mark them as wrong card wrong college or mark them as wrong like um, standing uh, like undergrad as graduate or graduate and as undergrad and that would render us in like electoral suits and since the, we do have a nature of the election system to be irre irre irreversible we cannot like easily to revoke anyone's vote so that become, became a problem because even though we discovered this kind of error we could not cancel it out before the election ends and we all need to like start it over or just count the margin of error and leave up to the court to decide, decide whether it's acceptable or not. And finally, for the legal challenge, um, in spring 2007, where um, we discovered like some of the election terms ID were rejected. And this kind of problem, like usually it, this is like a technical glitch that was issued in subcontractor by the school. Uh, by the manufacturer of school IDs, and we discovered this kind of problem, and we tried to like fix that in like one or two hours. But and usually for the like technicians or for the programmers, hackers here, it's quite um, it's quite common to like just fix and just constantly roll out updates and to make sure the things like work in the end of the day. But eventually, like we decided to extend the voting period since um, this kind of like glitches have in, enabled some candidates to spread ru rumors on like the electoral boards are, are doing fraud in elections, they are trying to alternate votes. So we're like uh, extending uh, the voting section like uh, for a bit, little bit longer and to like delay the election uh, ending process to make sure like everyone casts a vote and to make sure that this kind of techno technical error is like fixed. But eventually um, in the student court since we're eventually got sued, the student court found that, first of all, we could not like easily extend or like to um, change or modify our systems in, during the process. And it is like administration uh, institutes are not entitled to pause or postpone any kind of systems. So even though, if, even though we are like in rush hours, we are going to pause our system and to scale it up, we are not entitled to do this under like current um, cont continental law requirements. It's like um, it's not in the allowance in the legal uh, legal field. So this makes our like findings interesting. Is that after like five or six years of like e voting, we discovered that um, it is not actually e voting that matters. It is that we'll need to rethink how much like risk we could tolerate and how much like uh, changes we could introduce to the like legal scope. It's like we, our election act are actually like amended each year, but still we get suits and still we get like invalid elections. So if we are really introducing this kind of like problem in uh, this kind of system in a national national scale, we need to basically like reconsider our whole electoral act and system to and to discuss whether we could accept this kind of risk or not. So I'll end it with an like a comment is that like. Most of our engineers or we are trying to solve problems with our technology and we'll try to introduce more te uh, technical aspects to try to deal with like human errors and problems. But eventually I think um, e-voting, since it's, a it's basically a matter of trust, you could establish a well-trusted si system even with Google Forms if the like, officials are well-trusted. Well and the stakes will become higher and higher if like everyone have distrust in their own systems. So uh, after our all kind of like disastrous experience we'd like to share, um, we we'll basically came back to the trust issue and we'll eventually find out um, how to deal with the problems, I guess, in the new semester. Um, we'll just like devote this university to the spirit of the universe. As our saying goes, and yeah, that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Boren, for your sharing. I'm just very surprised that you didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all the videos and efforts. It's, how old are you now? Um, I'm 24 now. 24. Okay. So it's isn't it just amazing to see how the young generation <laughs> <laughs> trying everything to do a new way for democracy? Let's applaud for him. Thank you. Thank you.